We just that's why it. you're not gonna find that's why the Bible is the most talked about book on the planet because it's the only thing that has life in it. That's but, right. Okay, book what, of the what, Dead what, what, is what, just that. What book the is, book of the dead. Well that's a mistranslation, so we're not gonna listen to that. Right. It's so, called the Egyptian book coming forth by day yeah, by night. The, where at? The book of the that's dead. Hold on, hold on. Where at? No, I got you. It's the afterlife. Right. Not in this life. Incorrect again. It's called Pockets of Shippam Wood or Peri and Peru. It's, the rich, it's a ritual procession into the awakening. And everybody's right. goal is to become a Pusir, right. which is who you call Osiris. And his name means to awaken. Right. Because they see this. Where is he at? He's, he's living. He's in, a, he's in the living abode. That's what that is about. Where is that, though? That's not here. This is death. And there, Thank you. I just said in death. Right. No, no, no. Right. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. <laughs> You didn't just say that. I did. Let me correct you. Yeah, what did you say is that? No, what did you say is that? You don't want to. You don't want to be corrected. No, no, I'll I correct do. Hold on, hold on. I'll correct you. I'll give you that. I'll correct so you. Now, I you said, know what? I'm going to correct you. I said, you. Let me correct you. Talk about Mary and how old she is. Now stop. We're going to stay right here. I said the book of the dead is about what you do in the afterlife. There's no afterlife again. So now we're making. And you said where Osiris was at. In the living. And where is that? Where the living at? In the abode of the living, not on this plane. That's where you're making a mistake. You're that's saying what I'm, I'm at, no, I'm asking you. I'm going to answer that. Okay, that's what, where's that? So first of all, where's that? there's a mistranslation. So you see, you gotta stay out of our business. Cause you ain't I do out. though! Wait, just for the rap before you go? Hold on, before you go? You gotta stay out of our business. Wait, let me tell you, go before ahead. you go, we was just talking about how the debate was like seven years ago. Yes, sir. I washed myself of Egyptian shit. Right. I don't care less about it. So I stay out of y'all's. You know who don't stay out of my shit? Y'all niggas. Right. When we came together to talk about something, yeah, the man of God. <laughs> y'all niggas. When we came here to talk about something, y'all talk about. We have to because it's it's destroying our people because of their lack of knowledge. Now, that the part, Bible has wait, destroyed our part, people for their lack of see, knowledge. And, and my, in my honesty, that part I agree with you. That's why we go out and teach the right knowledge with it. I got you. Let me clean this thing up real quick. I mean, you ain't got to. I have to. I don't care about you like that, though. I do, and I don't want my people misinformed. Don't swear. So first of all, it's Pakatisha Pamuel, or Pedit and Guru, which means ritual procession into the awakening. They got a determinative at the end of the last word, okay, Haru, which is designed like sunrise, because things tend to wake up or plants tend to rise. So it intimates an awakening. So what they do, they got a period at the end of each word, not at the end of each sentence. And normally the period would be a determinative to encapsulate what the word actually means it represents. So it's a ritual procession into the awakening, meaning that, if, that what we do as a collective, we will be able to perpetuate consciousness and actually live. So when people say life after death, what they're saying is that this is death and life comes after. So the goal in the Book of the Dead, what they incorrectly call, which is a ritual procession into the waking, Pakatisha Pamuel, Peri and Baru, the goal is to acquire enough substantial knowledge in this existence so you can become an Usir, who they call Osiris, whose name means to awaken. And we get our awakening from our throne, who we call Isis. Okay, Isis is the throne. These are principalities. These are not who they were translated as God. That's why they draw an image of the flag, of a flag and a cloth, and they represent that as, na as nature, which is a cognate of nature. Why? Because when a flag moves, it's a testament that it's something that you can't see that is having an impact on the physical world. So that's why they use the flag. So now I'm just making it clear I'm that, clear, that, that it. we're My saying that life exists after this, and this is actually death. So the goal is to actually establish life after this existence, and if you do, you become an Usir. The goal is to become as an Osiris. We don't say Osiris actually was physically walking. We don't say Isis actually walked around here walking. Okay, they anthropomorphize and personify these things so it can be easy to be assimilated even to a child. That even a child through the stories and through the narrative would be able to make scientific correlations to understand what was taking place in terms of uh, space physics, bacterial, Genetics, uh, uh, biosymbiotics, autopoiesis, it's easy to learn that information once you process the anthropomorphization of these words and terms and phraseologies that was uh, contributed by the Egyptians. Hey, y'all give a polite hand for that shit, man. Come on, we don't play. Thank you, thank you, brother. Y'all stop, y'all stop, y'all stop. When y'all go back and listen to this shit, y'all gonna see the same way I called it death and he called it life, it's the same thing. Not the same thing. Now, my only rebuttal is, Take that Osiris shit, right? And I take my Bible shit, 
let's go out there and see who wakes up the people. That's oh, right. I show you. I, after I show after you. we do our regular debate, take that outside your shit on the street corner, T-Station. Okay. Now, right. now, now watch this. Wait, wait. Right. Go ahead. I'm a, I, I, that's the only oh, way. Yeah. We can move I have. Next. I have. And then I'm going to take the Bible. Right. And then let's say six months after that, and let's see who got people off of drugs. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because you're not going to tell a real nigga that old site. Well, I can't even I'm, say, I'm, I'm, say Let it. me take that back. Because niggas do believe in fairy tales. Right. And that's that old right. site of shit. You're going to some did, other mi- old Did Mr. 200 million coming out the sky to bang on it in the name of the Lord just say we believe in fairy tales? Yes, I did. Because that old Did Mr. The God is going to crack the clouds that's, in the sky? Let me tell you what he just broke down. That's the <laughs> heaven the slave master used to give us. The right. heaven. What heaven? That, because you don't get that on this plane. As you, you said. You don't get what? By right, accumulating knowledge and getting knowledge right. itself. But but the plane, the goal is the plane is itself. not on this earth, right? The plane is somewhere else. You're not going to so be physical, giving, bro. That's my point. So you giving niggas that same bullshit hope what? that the hope? slave master gave slaves for their heaven that's on another right. plane. Okay, it's let me ask you a question. Right. That's where heaven comes. Let me ask you. Y'all are fathers of that. Let me ask you. Y'all are right. fathers of dying and going to some place. You're getting all this knowledge so you can prepare and go to this other life. Ain't nobody I, even gonna see that shit. Okay, let me, right. let, me, let me ask you a question. We go to the next one. Let me ask you a question. Body, this, I'll make a flip right now. This, this is crazy. Let me ask you a question. So now we're gonna fault people for making sure they go on a path and walk upon a path to have knowledge itself. It's a bullshit path. It's a bullshit path because that have knowledge itself. Because you'll never see let me, it. let me show you something. It's, it's, it's I got like, you. I'm going to show you something, though. Right. Let me show you something, Ken. Let me show you something. You ask the average person that tell you about God, I guarantee if I ask these brothers how much minerals they have in their body right now. And they wouldn't know. What's their testosterone level? They wouldn't know. I if I ask them, what is the A1C my test? Uh, my testosterone level. Man. What's the number count? You wouldn't know. Of Actually, course you wouldn't. Because this is not what you said. But I wild satisfaction, though. Yeah, your wild so satisfaction, <laughs> your wild satisfaction isn't going to tell you if you're going to be diabetically inclined mm-hmm. or if you're going to have a tumor, though. Uh-huh. You see, your, your wild satisfaction isn't right. going to let you know what your blood sugar levels right. are. Right. Okay? And fuck around and get your, your, your leg cut. Because we right. do see a lot of our brothers over here, those strong, valiant, and mean well, are heavy set. Right. And so what I'm saying is, when we're taught to have knowledge yourself, I would say, yo, let me get a hair mineral analysis and deal with facts. So that way I can tell if I'm lacking, like most people, 60 to 75 minerals out of the 102 that I need. This white man don't come in here and give me all these crazy ass drugs when all I have to do is replenish those minerals and know what to do once I get the number count. Because then your child's gonna be so-called autistic or ADHD, which is subjective, opinionated. They can't catch it, they can't take a urine sample or get a cotton swab to tell if your child got ADHD. That shit is opinionated. But we fall subject to this all the time because we don't even know how to calculate what we need to do. So if I get a hair mineral analysis, that's going to help me. So now when they say you suffer from depression, extreme anxiety, suicide, and all these other things, we can take that test and say, oh, shit, you know what? Let me get my minerals up before I talk to the therapist or the rapist that then is going to prescribe drugs to us. Then I say, let me get a lipids test. Let me get a testosterone test. Let me get a CT scan. Let me get a C-reactive protein test. This is knowledge itself. Let me get an A1C test. Let me get a biome test and check how much good and bad bacteria I have and what ratio and which one is... Uh, low. Let me get a food sensitivity test because even if someone tells me that this is a good food for me to take in, I may have a bad reaction to it that doesn't register as a bump or itching or pain. But nonetheless, I may be eating this food thinking that it's good for me and I can't use it like other people can use it because I got a food sensitivity to it or a form of allergy. So what I'm saying is when we talk about knowledge of self, right, I'm going to be able to leverage what takes place in this existence, okay, thereafter by achieving knowledge of self. Because first of all, I don't want the integrity of my ability to even think to be compromised. We, we, if you go to a, if you go to Jiffy Lou, you gotta get your car, you gotta get a diagnostics <clears throat> test, and you're gonna find out if you need a, a wheel alignment, you're gonna find out if you need an oil change, you need transmission fluid, you're gonna find if you need a new pump, new brakes, this is what you're gonna find out. So our body's the same way. We gotta get a diagnostics on our body. You can talk all this, all these brothers here, they can tell you everything about God and God coming from all sorts of places. But I'll guarantee you, if I was to build one of my brothers about their own physical body, they wouldn't be able to have a testament about what's transpiring in their own physical body. 